The following short video describes a simulated snake bite scenario filmed during a weekend group trail run. This video was filmed in Victoria, but the following information can be applied to all suspected snake bites in Australia and is in accordance with the current Australian resuscitation guidelines. The rationale for this video is to provide some education on the use of the pressure immobilisation bandage and technique, which is a mandatory kit requirement in many trail races, particularly in the warmer months. Also to reinforce the importance of trail safety and preparedness during training. So one of our party felt something sharp on his lower leg and then observed a snake disappearing into the trees on the single track descent. He has a small wound. Sometimes there may be the classic two bite marks, but often there may only be one mark or just bruising. The casualty is assisted to the ground. It's important to keep the casualty warm, although this video was filmed on a hot, humid day um, with immobilisation, the casualty will cool down quickly. Administer any immediate first aid. Resuscitation takes precedence over application of the pressure mobilisation technique. We have a few hands, so calling for help and applying the pressure bandage can happen at the same time. This is the ideal situation as both processes can take several minutes. Call for help. So Chris calls the emergency services on triple zero and states the type of emergency. Um, fortunately, he has a mobile reception. It's important to emphasise that on the trails you may be unlikely to have an address and giving coordinates of latitude and longitude are helpful um, to help localise your exact location. These can be accessed from the Compass app on your smartphone when the location services are enabled if you have network coverage. You can also access coordinates from many GPS watches. Additionally, some races and events um, also have a contact number listed on the back of your race bib in event of medical emergency. Keep the casualty cam still and warm and apply the pressure immobilisation bandage. So the purpose of the pressure immobilisation bandage is to limit spread of any venom via the lymphatic system, so not the circulation. So it should be firmly applied. Um, by that, I mean it's difficult to slip a finger underneath the bandage, but not so tight that it restricts the blood flow. So we're not looking for a tourniquet effect. A few important points. Do not wash or suck the bite or discard clothing. Identification of venomous snakes can be made from venom present on clothing or the skin using a detection kit in hospital. Apply pressure over the wound and then apply the bandage at the wound or bite site and over any clothing. Another important point, leave a loop of bandage at this site. This will be used to cut a window by emergency staff in hospital later on so that they can swab the site um, to identify the presence or type of any venom without removing the bandage. In this image, you can see the loop of bandage more clearly identifying the bite site and the bandage continued up the limb over clothing towards the groin. If possible, continue the bandage up the limb as far as the groin. So we're looking to apply a limb encircling bandage from the, the bite site down the limb and then back up towards the heart until you run out of bandage. This assumes that the bite is on the limb. If it's on the trunk, apply pressure and an encircling bandage where possible. The next important point is immobilise the limb um, from the joint above and below the bite site. We've used a long stick in my jumper to mobilise the limb um, of the casualty here. Um, you could use another bandage if you have that available or incorporate a stick into the first bandage when initially applying it. Administer any additional first aid and keep the casualty calm and warm awaiting arrival of the emergency services. So a few key points. Um, do treat all Australian snakes as potentially venomous. Only a few experts can identify snake types from their appearance and these are very often deceiving. Do not attempt to catch, kill or identify the snake. Um, this might seem obvious but you wouldn't believe the stories we have from the emergency department. The important three aspects to the pressure mobilisation technique are applying pressure, applying a limb encircling bandage and immobilising the limb. We're not actually sure which of these three components of the technique is most effective, so we do all three. Do you have a practice applying the bandage with your trail buddies? These are mandatory kit in many Australian trail races and like all gear you should know how to use these should the need arise. The pressure mobilisation bandage is ideally a 10 to 15 centimetre wide elastic compression bandage in preference to a correct bandage. If you're on your own on the trails, apply the bandage and keep limb immobilised until help arrives. If you are on your own and have no alternative but to get yourself to help, 
apply the pressure mobilisation bandage and get yourself to the closest point of access to help, be that road or an area of mobile reception. When training, particularly carry a mobile and a pressure mobilisation bandage and ideally run with a friend on isolated trails with remote access or reception. Above all, the purpose of this video is not to scare you, but to inform you and prepare you should the rare but potentially life-threatening situation arise. Stay safe, have a plan and enjoy your summer training and racing on the trails.